Hi all, and welcome to the Medical AI Lab group session. Today, I'm delighted that we have Dr. Brian Sotikno uh, present to us um, a tutorial on DICOM. So without further ado, Brian, take it away. All right, yep, thank you very much, Pranav. Um, today's talk will be about DICOM. So my objectives for this talk are to understand the components of the DICOM file format and have a working knowledge of DICOM for image processing or AI purposes. And it's not a complete overview of DICOM. It's DICOM is a huge standard of maybe like thousands of pages. So this talk will really be uh, just trying to understand um, the basics of DICOM. So first of all, why do we need to know about DICOM in medical AI? Um, I kind of came up with a bunch of different ideas of why it's important. So medical images, especially in radiology, are stored in DICOM format. So you may receive a data set in this file format and may want to open it for viewing or for your data processing or AI training. And one example of this that I found was, for example, on Kaggle, the RSNA pneumonia detection challenge, um, all the files in that were presented in DICOM. And um, you may be working with clinicians who uh, may give you files in DICOM. Other programs, such as annotation tools, um, and this is something that I've done in my own research, was uh, using tools like MD.AI, which is an annotation software, um, primarily used a DICOM file format to um, analyze and upload and display the data. Um, you also may want to convert your data between file formats. So let's say you have a DICOM file and you may want to convert it to a JPEG or a, a TIFF so that you could open it in a image um, PDF viewer or a image viewer um, easily. And so um, understanding how DICOM works would be helpful for that. So first of all, what is DICOM? It um, stands for Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine. It was conceived more than 20 years ago. And it's actually not just a file format. It is a standard for both storing and transmitting medical images. So it includes a file format, but it also includes a communications protocol such that um, medical images could be sent um, within a hospital uh, IT system. So a DICOM file, which is the storage method, can be opened with DICOM viewers. Um, compared to like a JPEG or a TIFF, um, DICOM files can support multiple bits of grayscale. And um, this can be important because it provides better contrast in some cases than just having fewer bits for the RGB image. And um, the DICOM file also includes not only the image itself, but a bunch of other metadata, including um, how the image was acquired, um, what type of device it was on, um, the height and, and rows and, and width of the image. It also contains patient information, so the name, the sex of the person, um, other patient identifiers are all included in the metadata of the DICOM file. And um, in, as far as the network protocol, which we won't be diving into in this talk, um, it's just a way for computers inside a hospital system to exchange images. And it allows, for example, a physician at a workstation to access patients' images from inside an archive. And you can kind of see how that might work uh, in this pictorial diagram here where images are acquired from a scanner and they're stored in an archive and you have multiple workstations that are gonna um, be able to access that image. And oftentimes this uh, type of system is called a PAX, Picture Archiving and uh, Communication System. And DICOM is one of the standards that allows a PAX to, to exist and function. So um, there are ways to actually dump a DICON file, meaning like open it up and, and, and start showing like what's inside of it. And you can do that with some Java libraries or later on we'll go through a Python library that can do this. And you'll start to see some interesting uh, ways that DICOM has decided to format um, the information inside the DICON file. And we'll go through what these actually mean. So first of all, um, each there is something called a DICOM element, and 
um, the way that DICOM has structured a DICOM element is through three components, uh, or four, four components, actually. So the first is something called a tag. A tag basically tells whatever DICOM reader is uh, it lets a DICOM reader know what is uh, what information is after the tag. So we'll go into a little bit more onto this in the next slide, but uh, it's two hexadecimal numbers that correspond to some sort of attribute that lets the reader know what information is, is, is after this tag. And then there's a value representation. So there's um, basically two character string that tells you know, the reader that this is a string, a number, a date, or a time, and there's 27 types of value representations in DICOM. Um, and then there's a value length. So this tells the DICOM reader like how long the data element is going to be, because this is a sequential um, way of writing the data. So, you know, if you're trying to read the data, you would need to know how long to read the next uh, value for. And that comes after the value representation. And then there's the actual value itself of whatever data it is. That could be pixel data, it could be the patient's name, it could be um, the date, et cetera. And all these data elements are then just written to a file and they are stored in a sequential order. And then a DICOM reader would have to uh, essentially read each of these elements and parse them. So a little bit more on what those tags are. So um, as I mentioned, a tag has two hexadecimal numbers, um, something like that, like this, and they correspond to a group. The first, the first number corresponds to a group, and the second corresponds to an element. And from those hexadecimal numbers, you should be able to go directly to a uh, attribute um, that is unique. So, for example patient name is specified by these hexadecimal numbers here. And um, that way, uh, by, via the standard, um, if you wrote into the di into your DICOM file, this, this tag, you would, the reader would be able to know that that, that corresponds to a patient name. Um, this is kind of a diagram explaining you know, what would happen uh, when you're trying to write a DICOM file. So in the real world, you have some data but you like patient name and their images and stuff. And they, you would need to find out what the tags are for those data. So you would have this dictionary like this here, find the tags, and then you would put that into the DICOM file. So how would you actually build a DICOM reader? So <clears throat> you would just read out bit by bit um, the file, but knowing this, out, uh, DICOM element format that I just mentioned, you should be able to first read the tag here, which would be the first four bytes, and then the value representation, the next four bytes, the value length, next four bytes, and then the actual value, which core could be a variable length, but that would be specified by the length um, just given to you uh, in, in the first previous bytes. Um, one other thing that you can come across when you're working with DICOM files is something called a UID, a unique identifier. So let's just say that we had an original image here um, taken from the scanner, but you know, oftentimes the image may be manipulated. So there'll be some editing, um, cropping, compression, and each of these are derivatives of the original image, but they should be different. So uh, a way that DICOM kind of keep tracks of that is it creates a unique number for each of these um, instances. And um, the way that the unique identifier is structured is you have a um, organization root and then a suffix, and then there's a period in, in, in between. And the organization root is this specific number. I'm not entirely sure why, but it, that's like a common number for all DICOM files. And then after that, you have a suffix, which may include the patient ID, study ID, current date, current time, and milliseconds. And that's what all these numbers mean after the initial suffix. Um, there's like an information model that DICOM uses. So each patient is unique and then we'll have a unique patient ID that 
um, should be unique to that patient. And then each study as well will have also a unique um, number and each series and so forth. So this is how um, DICOM in theory should be able to keep track of a patient and also make sure that um, patients don't have this, uh, you're not looking at a scan from a different patient. Um, a little bit here um, about just how image data is stored in DICOM. So um, first of all, there's a tag um, that represents pixel, the corresponds to the attribute pixel data. And then within the pixel data element, there'll be the RGB pixels of the actual image. And each RGB pixel is made up of red, green, blue um, samples. And those samples will have a certain number of bits allocated to, to that. And in this case, I've, I've shown here um, a, that one pixel, one green pixel has 16 bits. But oftentimes you wouldn't use the entire 16 bits. Um, so that's why um, here it actually shows that um, the number of bits stored is 12 for this particular example. And this would just be written out in a linear array. And in order to reformat it and reshape it into your image, um, you know, you would have other attributes in the DICOM file, like the pixel height, or sorry, the image height and the image width that would help you um, actually put this image into its proper shape and form. So um, one useful tool that might be helpful for us if we're doing AI research or image processing is um, a uh, module called PyDICOM. And this essentially takes DICOM files and does a lot of the bread and butter of um, parsing the structure of the DICOM file. And uh, I do have, um, I do want to mention that a lot of the work that I mentioned uh, today was just from these references. Uh, very highly recommend these books. And uh, I do have a demo um, of just the PyDICOM just to hammer home some of the points. So I'll switch over to that right now. All right. Um, so I have a little bit here about some of the things that I explained uh, already. Um, DICOM's elements consist of tags, value representations, and so forth. Um, and then we can install the PyDICOM library. And this is a very simple demo, it, just to hammer in um, some of the points from, from the lecture today. And uh, the first thing we can do is this PyDICOM library comes in with some like example data sets. So it just get that test data file and you can read it using a command uh, DCM read, and then you can print all the elements in the DICOM file. And so uh, this just kind of gives you a hands-on kind of view of what's inside the DICOM file. So as I mentioned, uh, starting at the top, you know, you have all these different tags on the left here that correspond to different attributes. And then the attribute name is actually listed here. So you have things like study date, series date, um, the modality of the imaging technique, manufacturer. So there's actually a lot of metadata in here. Um, and, you know, actually the pixel data is like all the way down um, somewhere in the bottom here pixel data, yeah, so that's where the actual image is, but all of this other stuff is actually just the metadata uh, that you could use and extract from the DICOM file. And then uh, let's say that we actually wanted to, to look at that pixel data, um, the DICOM um, or by PyDICOM actually makes it pretty easy to do that because if you actually print out the pixel data itself, it's those bits that I was talking about, which is this line right here. And that's kind of, you know, take some time to to reformat those bits properly into the right shape and stuff. So PyDICOM already makes it a lot easier for you to access the pixel array by um, just having this dot pixel array. And then you can see the image here. 
Um, and yeah, so that was a short tutorial into DICOM and um, just kind of kept it nice and short and brief. I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, thanks, Bernard. Great, thanks a lot, Brian. That was a wonderful presentation.